Hello, everybody. This is Mark Newton. I'm the head of technical strategy for FS Insight. Uh, I wanted to take the time to address your community questions. Uh, we asked you a while back, uh, what are the things you would like to know uh, the most or have me address? And I'm going to address these and go through these one by one. As of now, it is getting towards the end of the first quarter for 2023. So it's right at smack dab at the end of March. It's March the 28th. And so you know, from a timing perspective, a lot of these make sense to address as we uh, near the end of Q1. Uh, the first one was regards to energy. And can I talk a little bit more about my view on the super cycle and why I think energy should work? Energy, of course, has been a pretty blatant underperformer really since the month of November. Uh, many recall last year that crude oil made a complete round trip, but yet uh, energy still held up remarkably well as a sector uh, up until about November, and then it really started to tail off. Um, you know, as of now, this is related to four key things as to why energy and specifically crude oil should be turning higher and why it's right to overweight. Uh, the one has to do with sentiment. Right now, we are seeing crude oil shorts reach the highest levels uh, we've seen in, in over four years. So everybody expects right now that crude should continue going lower. Uh, the second has to do with just the cycle composites. For many that have studied crude throughout its history, you know that there are several cycles which seem, seem to appear time and time again. Some of these are related to the normal cycles of 45 weeks and 90 weeks and the phasing is a little little bit off on these uh it's right near 93 weeks now for crude and really the uh the square of 12 144 weeks has been fairly uh predictable uh, and uh, over the last dozen years so the combination of these is a composite um you know has successfully pinpointed a lot of the highs and lows of crude oil over the past decade and it's now showing that we're coming into a low as we near the end of q1 uh the third reason has to do with seasonality and heading into the spring we're nearing the months of april may and june which historically has lined up as being uh one of the best three month periods for uh for energy and not only for crude oil but also for things like xle and some of the main energy etfs uh, the final reason is that many of these groups had gotten very oversold. So from a traditional technical standpoint, uh, energy had gotten overdone to the downside. But when I look at relative charts of how energy looks relative to the S&P, uh, it has not broken down and it remains trending higher from 2020. And that is when crude, of course, went negative in the month of March. And I believe a new bull market started in March of 2020 and it should be higher uh, in the years to come. So I, I believe the downside is quite limited. I think crude should not get below 60 and it should begin a move that takes it back up over $100. So yes, while inflation is expected to start to roll off, uh, the energy part of the inflation equation, uh, you know, could still be problematic if crude rises materially. And I, you know, technically I do see a good likelihood of crude starting to turn higher. Uh, I had mentioned 74.50 to 75 as being a key level for WTI in the front month. We are nearly there. I think crude closed right near $74, but it has gotten back up above several former lows and starting to act quite well uh, right as the uh, first quarter is close to coming to an end. So I like energy. I think it's a great area to buy dips. I think when I look at energy versus other sectors, it also looks appealing. Uh, it is underperformed in the near term, but in the longer term, starting from last year, of course, it was a big outperformer. So this pullback is simply mean reversion in my view and should be a chance to buy crude and buy energy and think this goes higher uh, in the second half of the year. My second community question, which asked really what would derail my bullish outlook for 2023. Uh, for now, as you know, sentiment is very much off sides. Uh, no matter what metric you use, uh, almost everybody believes the market is heading lower uh, for a lot of the right reasons with regards to potentially Fed policy or heightened expectations of a recession this year, uh, increased uh, geopolitical risk, and you know, in general, just some uneasy feelings about the Fed and really a lot of the mixed messages that we've gotten from Powell and Yellen and really not being on the same page. And 
people really trying to understand truly what the end game is for uh, for monetary policy and where, you know, if the Fed is truly done or, you know, how this whole commitment to QT is, you know, juxtaposed with the recent $300 billion uh, raise in uh, the Fed's balance sheet, which those two obviously are completely uh, opposite. So, you know, interestingly enough, you know, a lot of my work, of course, is with regards to technical analysis. I look at cycles, I look at sentiment, I look at seasonality, and uh, uh, most importantly, I guess I look at price action and trends and momentum. And for the time being, you know, the rally from last October's lows uh, has not really petered out sufficiently to think that we need to pull back and have a retest. Um, you know, if we were to get down under December lows from last year, that would be 3750. Um, then that would certainly increase the odds, I think, of a retest and could happen into the second quarter. Uh, my cycle composite, you know, does show on a weekly basis that we, you know, potentially could have some volatility in the back half of April into May, but it turns out pretty sharply thereafter. So cycles are pretty bullish for the majority of 2023. Sentiment, as we know, is quite bearish and on any decline would actually get worse. And to the market's credit, you know, we've seen technology hold up remarkably well. And that is the most important sector, of course, of the S&P. It's, you know, over 27% and very important. You know, in the last uh, week or so, we've seen a minor stalling out in technology, but it has not been sufficient to think that tech is rolling over or that tech should start to turn down. Meanwhile, we see actually a pretty good recovery in, in sectors like energy lately and healthcare and some stabilization in the banks. And I think that is quite important. So uh, there's two things that can happen. One is that, you know, the majority of the cyclicals start to trade better than they have been since the beginning of February and start to hold up and join technology. Uh, the opposite is that they all start to roll over and tech also turns down. And that would certainly be apparent. We would have a pretty good sign that that's happening at least initially uh under 3900 but certainly you know 3750 to 3800 is is really an important area and i'm using 3750 as being sort of my line in the sand where if that's broken you know that does suggest that we can see a little bit further weakness even then though i think it should prove short-lived i don't think it's going to be long lasting throughout the balance of 2023 i am optimistic for this year and next and a lot of that has to do with just uh, combination of cycles of sentiment and the fact that year got off to such a great start. But I know that everybody is sort of questioning uh, the bullish outlook from anybody that's saying that, specifically because February was so nasty and uh, negative and really went against what a lot of the traditional seasonality does suggest. Um, you know, we're entering the month of April coming up, and that normally is a very bullish month. And so the fact that, uh, you know, we're pulling back towards the end of March and we should actually create a low into end of Q1 and turn higher uh, in the month of April. That's normally a very bullish month. And so uh, right now, my, my bullish view is not derailed. Um, when I came out with my technical outlook in January of 2023, um, you know, two months ago, we discussed two different scenarios. And one was that inflation would roll off sharply. In that case, equities would be resilient and we would get to 4,500. And the other was that inflation would be sticky and that, uh, you know, we could see yields and the dollar start to turn up very sharply and that could potentially derail the equity rally. Uh, for now, we haven't seen sufficient signs that that is the case, honestly. And if inflation starts to, you know, pull back in the next month, I think that's going to be very supportive and equities rally through that. Uh, if that changes and really it's all about price action. So as long as equities are holding up, technology is holding up, sentiments negative, seasonality and cycles are bullish uh one wants to be involved and if that changes then we will certainly address it in the daily notes but you know as i've said even on a pullback i do expect it to prove short-lived and not long-lasting and we should uh in a bearish case we would bottom out in the month of uh of likely late may early june and then uh, and then turn up the third of the of the three questions and has to do with institutional uh, money and whether clients are really seeing any substance to this rally and, and whether they think it should continue. Um, you know, a lot of my conversations uh, daily, I have, you know, at least, you know, sometimes three or four meetings, sometimes a day, Zoom meetings. And a lot of these uh, talk to PMs, portfolio managers, and also traders that are still quite negative. Uh, most of the sentiment polls that I see 
not only on a retail level, but also on an institutional level show that, uh, you know, there's a very heavy move into cash these days and that uh, U.S. equities remain, um, you know, people are very pessimistic right now on the chances for recovery. I think for the first time in a long time, there's been a big divide uh, between how technical analysis is viewing the market and how fundamental analysis views it. And many on the fundamental side are completely convinced that earnings provisions are going to continue to go lower, uh, that the Fed uh, likely has hiked us into a recession that should show further evidence uh, in the next couple of months. Um, you know, my view, of course, is that price action is much more important than trying to guess as to whether the Fed is going to hike in any more or whether we're done after this this last bout of 25 basis points. Um, the words of Stanley Druckenmiller, you know, the stock market is the best economist I know. And so knowing that the stock market has done as well as it did from last October, and specifically since last December, um, you know, stocks are still holding up remarkably well. Technology is doing well, and I don't see evidence thus far that the market is turning down sharply. So, you know, the technicals uh, are a little bit uh, different right now and a little bit more optimistic than what the fundamental view is saying. You know, my view is that if we're truly done with the rate hikes, there should be a pivot and that uh, that can lead to a return to growth. And I agree with Tom Lee's thinking that inflation, um, you know, which has been looking at lagging factors, is going to start to uh, continue to roll off pretty sharply in, in the months to come. So that leaves me being uh, an optimist. But, you know, for my own technical reasons, we'd have to do more with, you know, momentum and, and sentiment, seasonality and, uh, and breadth and thinking that, uh, you know, other sectors are picking up the slack and uh, starting to act uh, quite well, uh, even though technology has taken a minor pause, we have not really rolled over. But uh, the bottom line answer is that uh, institutional money still appears to be on the sidelines. People are only very slow to put money to work. And I think that's going to have to change if markets turn up very sharply into the month of April. People are going to really have to chase this rally and you know, this this entire wall of worry situation, you know, is going to cause a lot of short covering as people have to chase and, and buy uh, as the market goes higher. Thank you very much for tuning in and uh, hope everybody had a wonderful uh, Q1 and look forward to the rest of the year. Take care.